you're watching Investor Insights. In this video, I want to discuss asset classes. Most investors are only talking about stocks. But if you're confined to only stocks as an investment, then you're basically missing out um, on other gains should the stock market not work for you. Now, aside from stocks, there's a lot of things that you can put your money in. You can look at real estate. You can look at um, other currencies. You can look at precious metals. You can look at commodities, soft and hard. You know, you've got um, uh, uh, oil, you've got uh, your silver, you've got platinum, you've got all sorts of um, minerals out there and your, your soft commodities which are like your food type things like your grains, your uh, wheat, you've got uh, fruits and vegetables it, it goes, the list just is endless and then you've got uh, things like bonds um, you've got other lesser well-known um, asset classes such as collectibles whether it be stamps, cars, coins, whatever it is that um, is rare out there would be considered to be a collectible. Mm -hmm. So, like, you know, boxes of tissues aren't collectibles, obviously, because they're dime a dozen. Mm -hmm. Gold coins, mm -hmm. very collectible. Despite gold having a pretty rough year, doesn't matter. You can't print gold, you don't find gold on the street corner, it's a collectible and it will keep on going up. When you look at asset classes, you're looking at either um, specifically investing into one or two asset classes, or you can uh, allocate you, your money into all asset classes, so as to uh, lessen your risk of losses if one or two of those asset classes don't perform or in fact implode. But to a true investor, the easiest thing to invest in or to put your money in is either cash or cash equivalents or stocks. Simply because they're very liquid investments. Things like real estate, they're highly liquid. You can't just decide to push a button and buy or sell a house. There's a lot of expenses with the transaction, whether it be buying or selling. And when you buy, you've got conveyancing, you've got things like surveys got to be done, you've got inspections, you've got um, the stamp duties and other various um, taxes uh, from whatever state that you're buying in. Man, on a million dollar house, stamp duty is at least 40 grand. So already, the cost of acquisition of a property is going to be at least 4%. It's a pretty big number. I mean, when you trade stocks, man, when you get in, it's on a very cheap uh, trading platform, you're looking at 0.1% uh, brokerage, irrespective of the size. Right. Uh, so the cost of getting into a million dollar position is basically a hundred bucks I mean that's alright I can live with that you don't want to go out there and pay 4% um, uh, acquisition costs on every single trade that you do man that's going to eat into your profit margin and then you've got uh, when it comes to selling a property, you've got to look at um, the expenses incurred, such as like, you know uh, real estate agents' fees, uh, commissions and fees. You've got um, uh, conveyancing again. You might have to pay for um, an, an inspection. I mean, who knows? These things are just very, very expensive assets. And more often than not, you don't trade them. 
you you very often have to look in the very for the very long term and put your money down and be done with it and hope that you've made a good investment decision you look at bonds they're a very uh, fairly liquid investment I mean it's very easy to get in and out the bond markets huge uh, the, the problem is is that right now in a low yield environment and high inflation bonds are not a very good investment in fact bonds are an absolute <clears throat> of an investment I wouldn't touch them with a 10 foot pole other investments such as collectibles you have to know what you're doing and odds are you you should be either in that field or an expert in that field working in that field before you decide to invest your hard-earned money into those asset class into that asset class so if you're an avid coin collector or a stamp collector and you've got a huge collection that's um, worth a mint keep on collecting build your wealth that way use your expertise your expertise was your education so just as much as a coin collector or a stamp collector knows their stuff a stock investor or collector if you wish to call it that should know about their stocks no, a coin collector who goes into stocks and knows nothing is, commi is committing financial suicide. Just as a stock investor who goes into coins is doing the same thing. Be an expert in what you're investing in or collecting, obviously. Don't just be a lemming. Listen to a whole bunch of people talking and make investment decisions that are ill-informed and totally ignorant of the consequences of making those investments. If in doubt, always stay out. But the main message is, despite always hearing about the stock market on the news, or despite hearing about certain companies doing well and their stocks going up, or companies doing bad and their stocks going down, don't focus all your energies as an investor on just stocks. Now, I'm saying this with a heavy heart because I love stocks. But I know that fundamentally, the stock market is so overpriced now, I'm not going to go near it on the long side. I'm happy shorting it, but I keep tight stops. So, you make sure you know exactly what you're doing and invest in the uh, asset classes that you know best if you don't understand something and somebody tells you to do something in an asset class that you're unfamiliar with you're going to commit financial suicide trust your brains learn to think for yourself and invest wisely until next time